Fee, fi, fo, fum. So begins a legend that we all know, the legend that we all hold, the legend that we all love. Hi, I'm Jake Hamilton here at King Henry VIII's Hampton Court Palace in the south of London, getting ready to talk with the stars of Jack the Giant Slayer about what it took to take this film from the bedside to the big screen. Get ready, here comes the thunder. This is Jake's Takes. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Ask not whence the thunder comes. For between heaven and earth is a perilous place. Home to a fearsome giant race. Who hunger to conquer the mortals below. Waiting for the seeds of revenge to grow. I saw your light and I'm lost. What are you doing out in this nasty weather, your highness? Your books? My father used to read that to me. I like a good adventure. I'm looking for an adventure of my own. What? Isabel grow up hearing all these wild rumors and legends about giants, and then to their surprise, it turns out to be true. What is a wild rumor, a wild legend that you always heard about this business that you were most surprised actually turned out to be true? <laughs> <laughs> about this business, about filmmaking? Ooh, a wild. That people. Uh... Aye, aye. That people judge films very much on their box office success. And, that, and, and you found that that is I true? I found that that's fairly true in many ways. Well, yeah. as the star that's of, not the, that of wild, though. the number I mean, one I, opening I movie, you're, that's not a bad thing right now. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. good for the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the tables can turn on that very quickly. Very true, very I mean, true. he's everywhere. He's all over London. When I got on the tube, I'm like, for goodness sake. He's in my face. I'm, I'm seeing him again, next so. week. <laughs> you can't avoid the man. What would you want to? Would you really want to avoid that guy? Uh, <laughs> she did have to work with me for five yeah. minutes. <laughs> I was on set with him for a day and, and I had to, I had to take that. off. Uh, Is there anything wild and crazy that you were most, that you were surprised, like, oh my, I can't believe that, that that's actually legit? Um, probably just the amount of, of time that it takes to set up sh uh, shots and stuff. You know, it's, there's a lot of waiting and I guess that um, you hear about it and you go, no, not really, but then, yeah, it's, it's, Hurry it's up and wait. a lot of waiting. Exactly. But, you know, yeah. it's worth it in the end. This one, there was a lot of waiting particularly, but that was because we actually shot it in 3D. Yeah. Um, so for a 3D production, we're moving quickly. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Compared to most. Absolutely. And right. you have to take the time to kind of make sure that you, you're giving the best performance you can give and that then everything else is tied in with that, you know, you've got the CGI on top of it and everything down to the simul cam shots of giants grabbing you and stuff, your body's not moving in the right way, or if, even if the camera's just slightly off, then the whole thing doesn't work, so you exactly. have to go again. So. Mm. But it's very technical, but yeah, it, it looks is. spectacular. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's incredible, it's incredible. I find it ironic though that, uh, you know, we always hear the story of Jack climbing the beanstalk, but we find out in the movie that he has a crippling fear of heights, which I actually thought was a cool little character flaw in there. What is the most crippling fear that you've experienced on a movie set? On a movie set? Um, fear of not knowing lines. Yeah, that's is that, horrible. Does that happen? Is that a, is that a that's thing? That's legit, and I'm struggle. I struggle with it majorly all the time. I have uh, nightmares about it. Wow. Yeah. That really surprised me. I feel like I'm gonna break down and cry <laughs> just talking about it's, it. We can have a Barbara Walters moment. It's okay. Yeah. We know each other. We're, we go. We go way back. <laughs> Um, one, of my, one of my favorite lines in the movie was, and I wrote it down, and it's, uh, we must assume every story our father told us was true. Which kind of like, it just stuck with me for a while. So thinking about all the stories that you were told growing up and all the legends and stuff, which one do you most wish would just be true? Aliens, but I do think there's something out there. Mm, I'd that have to agree with The universe is too big to not have. Yeah. And apparently, like, people are going to live on Mars now as well, so I might even put my name forward. Why not? Next junket we do on Mars. <laughs> Nicholas has been avoiding me for the last year because I've followed him around to three different countries. But next junket he does on Mars, I'll still be there. You just see me cut to me like that. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Even, even on Mars, I'll I can't just float, get away from float to my chair and be like, I'm still here, man. You can't avoid me. You can't avoid me. Now, when it comes to like big blockbusters with tons of special effects, obviously you have some experience with, uh, with the X-Men films and, and you're pretty new to this realm of, of that. Very new. So I was yeah. wondering, what do you think is her biggest advantage by being new to this type of film and what's his biggest disadvantage to have, having done it before? Uh, biggest advantage, I would say. <laughs> this is very difficult. Um, it, it's probably not 
probably that whole thing where you, you, like experiencing it for the first time is very exciting and 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 it's kind of it's thrilling i don't know it, it's kind of weird and wonderful and once you've done it maybe a, a, t- a couple of times you kind of become tainted <laughs> <laughs> tainted that's what yeah. i'm going with that's a, i mean it's a difficult yeah. question yeah biggest disadvantage is that everybody knows who you are so it says more on the line i guess you know it's it's like your um your people are, are more likely to to well they, of course they know they know your name and they they're more likely to compare compare you and you can come in and smash it and do wonderfully as you did in this film and everyone's like wow who's her yeah this is amazing guys i could talk to you all day <laughs> hopefully my questions weren't too weird trying to ask something you haven't been asked a thousand no, times no, so no, far. That completely yeah. was. I appreciate it, man. You, Always good to see you. It's such you a too. pleasure nice to meet you. Did you guys come from? Am I dead? Not just yet. The legends are true. Elmont, assemble a team of your best men. Yes, sir. Bring back my daughter. Your Majesty, I want to volunteer. What do you suppose is up there? I simply prepare for everything. So I love that they paired you two guys together because I love your characters, the classic kind of Errol Flynn hero and then the, the great classic villain. <laughs> In what way, tiny or, or big, is the person sitting next to you like the character that they play? Um, the, well, <laughs> <laughs> Sidney Tucci here is not in any way... <laughs> He's just such a lovely guy. He's not, but he's dashingly handsome, like yeah, his character. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. true but story, he's not. That's true. Um, he's not an evil man like his character. Yeah. You no, know, Ewan is is of course very dashingly handsome and you know Flynn-like, and 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 heroic. I love. No, but he's a good. He's a good person. Like when I read person. the script, it suge- it introduces Elmont as, uh, as a. Uh, um, Cocky Errol Flynn type is what it was. Oh, is that what it said? And I read it as Cockney Errol Flynn type. <laughs> so for quite a long time, I was at home going, All right, my lady, uh, doing it in Did the Cockney really accent. Said, go- and, then, and then I can't remember, someone went, Why are you doing it in that accent? I went, Well, it says it's a Cockney Errol Flynn. They went, No, cocky. Went, oh, yeah. <laughs> Slightly dyslexic. Sorry. I would have paid could have to see the cockney. That's really funny. Yeah, it could have been. It that. could have been funnier. That could have been. Better. I would say I, I would have paid to see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. one of the lines I love in the movie, and I wrote it down, is that mankind likes to immortalize itself, thinks that it can live forever. Now, you guys, I think you know, movies is one of those mediums that has the potential to live forever, and you guys have given great performances in some of my favorite movies of all time. Which one is the one do you think will will immortalize you? Will make you live forever? I don't like to think of it as being the one, you know, because it's because. Um, it's if it's if I was impossible to sort of pick a favorite. They all mean different things to you, movies that you've made, and they, um, you know, you're proud of them for different reasons. Um, so I don't really know. Yeah, I don't think there's a one that you know. You hope it's maybe like all you're of all of them. No, but you're your like body the, of work. the your body of, right. of yeah. work that that you've yeah. been, you know, hopefully truthful in what you're doing, and and in that truth comes. Um, I suppose, some kind of resonance at the end of your life. Right, right. Now, I love this idea that kind of we learned at the end of the film that th- these stories change over time, that, you know, all, you know, the way people tell them, the way, you know, they're told to their children, yeah. it's different than the way it actually started. Yeah. Thinking about who you were when you started out in this business, what's the biggest difference between who you were and that first acting gig versus who you are sitting in front of me today? Well, I don't wake up in other people's clothes wondering where I am anymore. <laughs> 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 was that was that the norm? I'm wondering who I am <laughs> and why do I have this Cockney accent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be the biggest difference for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think for well, I had hair, and, <laughs> and I was then I was thirty years younger. But I uh, I think now you know I have a a better perspective on show. I, you know I don't. There, it doesn't take as much effort to do what. I do anymore. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think when you're younger, you have a tendency yeah. to put, use a little too much energy and too much effort and think about things too much. And now... I spent my entire flight to London trying to write questions you guys you had, did. hadn't heard you did, yeah. all day today. Well, you did it. Oh, no, I you appreciate it. You did it. It's great. I appreciate it. I appreciate it's a shame it. it didn't give you a bigger piece of paper, though. Yeah, this, is all, this is all I had. This yeah. is all they gave me oh, on, right. my, on, oh, my yeah. flight, on my flight to London. So, so I had to squeeze all these questions out yeah. there. They give me the rap. I could talk. I have more. I could right. talk to you guys all day. Truly an honor to sit across from you, gentlemen, as always. Thank you. You're so nice.
kind have returned. They're uglier than I remember. The mission is to find and return the princess. Tomorrow, you shall return below with me as your new king. Are you mad? I'm talking to giants at the moment. A lot of stories, if they're lucky, they're told over thousands of years, and then if they're even luckier, they eventually become bedtime stories. Mm -hmm. And you have directed so many great stories in your career. So I was wondering, in a thousand years, which one do you think has the best chance of being a bedtime story, and which one do you think has the worst chance of being a bedtime story? Uh, this probably has the best chance of being a bedtime story, this film, because it's, 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 it's easy to follow. You know, hero, princess, all those kind of things. Easy to tell. The worst one would probably be The Usual Suspects, because the kid would be... Oh, no, actually, The Usual Suspects would probably be the best one, because the kid would be so confused, he'd just pass out. <laughs> I would love to tell my son one day <laughs> the story of, uh, of Kaiser Soze. Yeah, exactly, and then the kid would just be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined uh, apt pupil one day, perhaps, maybe, <laughs> not, the being, worst maybe story. not being the best bedtime story ever. <laughs> Um, but you know, a lot of people, you know, near the beginning of the film, would say that uh, Jack made a mistake by selling the uh, the horse for mm -hmm. the for the beans, and that ultimately ended up being one of the best decisions he ever made. So I was wondering, in your career, what's the best mistake you ever made? Uh, the best mistake I ever made was. Uh Deciding to make this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I, really, no, because I, because I, I literally was, I just, I was in a bit of a panic. I didn't know what I wanted to do next, and there wasn't anything around. And my friend was like, uh, or two friends, the head of the studio and another uh, former uh, executive who worked with me, and now works at uh, Legendary. And they were like, "Hey, what do you think of this?" And I was like, "Okay, Jack and the Beanstalk." And at that time, there was no fairy tale movies. There was none of them. So I thought, oh, I guess I'll do a fairy tale. And uh, I guess, but I was kind of like, I thought it was, I was making a mistake. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, what am I getting myself into? And then, did, uh, but did now you, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> were you worried in terms of uh, the logistics with X-Men? Because I know that working on this didn't, I think it didn't keep you from directing yeah, First was, Class. Were you worried about... Uh, well, I developed, I, I, I developed First Class for myself to direct, and I, then, then I was obligated to do this. But I also, in the end, I realized I really wanted to do this. I, I wanted to be in the space to make a movie with this tone, to actually explore motion capture, performance capture, create living CG characters. I hadn't done that kind of stuff before. And I, I was very happy to produce, uh, to produce X-Men First Class, and it led me to my relationship with Nick Holt, who is exactly this movie. And, so. then, and then we're getting Days of Future yeah. Past coming up, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, I'm about. very excited about Very that. excited. Um, there's a line in the movie that I loved, and I wrote it down. Is that you think you're the hero of the story. Don't you know that we all think that? <laughs> yes. So I was wondering, on a movie set, who all thinks that they're the hero? And of those people, who is the most right? Oh, everybody thinks they're the hero. <laughs> oh my god, the guy who brings the pencil. It's, it's like you, you couldn't make this without this pencil, dude. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I think I always go give it up to the actors because they're just you know they're out there every day, exposed, doing it, living it, and they can't. You know, I can always crawl into a tent or or, or close my eyes, but they've got to be really focused and, and given given all of themselves. So they're kind of the heroes of a movie. Right, right. Now the three D in this is nothing short of astounding. It's unbelievable, no, and thanks. you've directed some truly mm. incredible movies and incredible scenes. Of all the scenes that you've done, if there were one that you wish that you could have shot in three D, which one do you think would have benefited the most from it? Oh, in the previous movies. Oh, that that chase in the White House in X Men Two oh, with Nightcrawler. That would have been cool. My in 3D. God, that would have been amazing. Yeah. No, there, I enjoyed. It. We shot native stereo, mm -hmm. and we took, a, you know, we didn't post dimensionalize. We right. actually, you know, and we used some of the best equipment. And I, I really took a lot of care in, in shooting it, knowing that it was my first 3D movie, and I wanted it to look really good. Are we getting Days of Future Past? Is that going to be shot in 3D? That will be shot in native stereo as well. It's going to be amazing. All right, well, cool. until then, congratulations, right. my friend. Always an honor to talk to you. If you All come right. to Houston, I have a very comfortable fold-out couch. Great. I You're more than welcome. I look forward to it. All right, take care, guys. <laughs> See you soon.